Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Very warm welcome to you all. Um, welcome to Christchurch and welcome to those of you joining us at home for our online service as well. Um, good to have you with us today. Our service this morning is a Climate Sunday service, which is being led by Joanne. Um, I've got a couple of notices to let you know about. Um, just a reminder that we have a congregational meeting on the 22nd of June um, at 7pm. If you haven't already spoken to Jo to let her know if you're able to make that, then please do so. There is an agenda for this available in the vestibule. Um, and next week, um, a group of us are going over to um, St John's URC in New Barnet for the second session in the um, Learning Hub series, which is on whole life worship. And if anybody else would like to join us for that, we can arrange car shares and things like that. But if you um, would be interested in coming along for that, then please do let me know. Let's take a moment to pray together. Loving God, we thank you for this time where we just put aside all the things of the everyday and take this time just to focus on you as we come together here in this place and from our homes to worship. We thank you for Joanne who is leading our service this morning and we pray that you will open us up to your message today. Open our ears, open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds and make us receptive to what you have to say to us and where you want us to go. Amen. Hello and welcome everybody. Um, as Louise says, we're marking Climate Sunday today and taking the time to consider how as Christians and as a church we should respond to the growing crisis um, we see around the earth. The um, words today come largely from the United Reforms Climate Sunday um, information and the videos are coming from the Baptist U Union Environmental N Network and I'm very grateful to both of those for these, these words. So let us start with a call to worship. Um, there are some responses. If you could respond and say the words in yellow capitals, that would be grand. In the beginning and today, God shapes beauty from chaos. Today we respond in praise. In the beginning and today, God speaks. Today we speak out. From the beginning and from all days, God sustains with faithfulness. Today we make our commitment. Through the warmth of the sun and the blessing of the rain, with all that has breath, we give glory to God. As the sun and moon shape the day and the night, so we children of earth tend and care where we live, through fire, through water, we pass on our way. Bring us refreshment today. Let's start and, and sing and stand if we're able. Jesus is Lord, creation's voice proclaims it. That's 353 in singing the faith.
let us pray our prayers of confession. There is a, a bit for you to join in with a little further along, so please do so. Dear Lord, despite our greed and arrogance, despite our apathy and despair, despite chosen bitterness and hatred of the body, God still commends compassion, offers healing, peace, new life. God forgives in Christ incarnate in the earth, we reconnect in joy. Let us confess our sins to God and put behind us what we need carry no longer, that God's hope and grace might heal what have broken in God's world. God of all flesh, whose mind evolves in wonder, in your great love you place in our way such warning signs as we should without delay divert our lethal course and direct us to responsible life and faith. Alone and yet by grace together we acknowledge that alone yet far worse together. We have chosen ignorance, denial, injustice through silence, hesitation in place of wisdom and faith on us through exclusion. We have determined human poverty through greed and wealth and abuse of the earth and fellow creatures through all that we allow to pass as wisdom or as choices not ours to make. We have disregarded the needs of life's common home and set sail for disaster. Have mercy on us, O God. Set us free to choose life and live justice, that we may not be mired in fear of tomorrow, but forgiven and forgiving, boldly find our part in joy today, sustained by hope and the wonder with our friend, the Lord Jesus Christ. God challenges us, God encourages us, God comforts us and God accepts us. God works wonders in our midst and gives us eyes, hearts and souls to cherish life. God forgives us, for Christ is the way, when all we see is wilderness, there to dwell at home with abundant life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, Teresa is going to come and read our Bible readings for us. In Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world, and all who live in it. Genesis 2. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth.
Thank you, Teresa. We're now going to sing again. So stand if you're able to sing. Think of a world without any flowers. So instead of listening to me give you a reflection this morning, I've got two videos from the Baptist Union Environmental Group. Um, it's a two of a series of four videos that they did about aspects of our world. And I'd like to ask you to listen and reflect as you take them in. Some went out to the sea in ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters. They saw the works of the Lord, his wonderful deeds in the deep. So say the ancient words of a song. Perhaps people have always been drawn to the sea, a place of separation, of tranquility, wonder and awe. Places of uncertainty, fluidity. The creation story of the Bible describes God gathering the sea in one place so that dry land appears. Solidity, speaking of the certainty of God, in contrast to the slip through your fluidity of the oceans. And while after the story of the flood, God promised Noah that never again will the sea rise up to engulf the land, the separation is never complete. For the sea's powerful hands claw away at the rocks of mountains and cliffs, exposing rock layers laid down through eons of time at the bottom of ancient oceans. The sea reveals rock's fluidity, plastic, its layers twisted and broken, lifted up, tilted down by tectonic forces that shape the earth. Coasts reveal unstoppable power, 
power that exposes human frailty in the face of divine majesty, might and purpose. Yet there is joyful playfulness too. In the sweeping tides of the seas, fingers that caress the land, ebbing and flowing thrice daily. Responding to the dance of earth, moon and sun, gravity pulling at the land and sea. In the playful in-between world of the tides, life emerged from the oceans, plant then animal. As divine playfulness shaped the community of life through evolution's gain. Uncertainty in an uncertain place, bringing new possibilities, expressing God's life giving breath in myriads of created forms, even complaint alien worlds found in rock pools, anemones, whelks, mussels, crabs, shrimps, limpets, seaweeds of all kinds, living within the playful uncertainty daily. A sea caresses claws at the land, life-giving nutrients laid down in those ancient oceans are returned, land feeding the sea, enabling flourishing of life in hidden abundance, which only now our scientific explorations are beginning to reveal. An invitation to extend our appreciation and praise over the joyful diversity of God's creative handiwork. Close to placeful places. We are drawn to play on their beaches and walk along their magnificent headlands and coasts. Peer into countless rock pools. They draw us, they cause fear in us. And in between these two, they invite us. It was on the coast that Jesus invited fisher folk, Peter, Andrew, James and John to leave their boats and nets to become fishers of men. And in the bewildering times following Jesus' death and rumours of an empty tomb, he met them on a beach to renew the invitation to walk within the purposes of God. They made a living from the sea's fruitful abundance, yet they knew the fragility of empty nets and life. In our day, the sea's abundance is ravaged by overfishing. From pollution as fertiliser is washed from land to sea, causing algae to bloom, depleting oxygen levels, causing the desification of the oceans. Plastic litters the beaches, floats on the sea's surface, is found even in its deepest depths, infecting the food chain. And as the earth warms due to rising levels of human release carbon dioxide from fossil fuel use, the seas are lifted up. Fertile lands and livelihoods, poisoned by salt, or washed away entirely. In such an age, as we walk by the sea, and as Jesus meets us there, what is his invitation to us in our bewilderment? to share in God's purposes again.
Some went out to the sea in ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters. They saw the works of the Lord, his wonderful deeds in the deep. So say the ancient words of a song. Perhaps people have always been drawn to the sea. Look up. Your feet are resting lightly on the surface of the earth. Even raising your arms and reaching out in full stretch to the heavens, your body extends less than a few meters towards the sky. The twig tips of the long bodies of beech and oak around you will comfortably stretch to 30 or 40 meters above the earth. And these are not even the tall ones. Imagine these slender trunks ten times as wide, three times as tall, they go by the name of Sequoia. Their congregations are the true Gothic cathedrals, formed over centuries, even millennia, of uninterrupted, sun-directed praise. Maybe it makes you feel quite small, quite temporary. So, how long will you stay looking up? You might pass the time watching for squirrels scrambling up and down the vertical highways of the trees or looking out for forest aviators as they expertly navigate the air within the branchy canopy. You might attempt to count how many different types of ant, beetle, spider, snail, frog and bat can be found going about their daily business on each high-rise trunk. You could stay for a long time. If you're a fancier of fungi, lichen and moss, that's more time still. In the cloud forests or more tropical climes, even the trees are like forests as epiphytes, the aptly named air plants, and ferns colonise the canopy far above the forest floor. By nature, the trees are in it for the long term. But unlike them, if you stay standing here, in time you will get hungry, thirsty and cold. You will have to leave this spot, but the trees will remain. In the right undisturbed spot, the trees can remain for hundreds of years, the forest might remain here for thousands of years or more, quietly growing, discreetly busy. Trees are stealth environmental engineers. They've fooled most of us into thinking that the real action in nature is going on around them, whilst they're surely only a little less inert than rocks. The dappled green light which is filtered through the forest canopy is soothing, makes us feel tranquil amongst these inaudible solar-powered bioengines. You can't hear it, but they're creating matter from sunlight and air, drawing moisture from the soil and pumping it into the clouds, building soil from rocks and old leaves, incidentally or otherwise, providing foodstuffs and habitats for everyone, from human beings to bacteria. To stand where you are, beneath that dappled canopy, beside the mossy trunk, above the knobbly roots, you stand on a sort of anchor that anchors at both ends, sky to earth and earth to sky. The sky needs the tree to make the earth yield its moisture through evapotranspiration, which keeps rain falling far away from the sea, even when there isn't a mountain around to help. The earth needs the tree to harness the sunlight pouring down from the sky and through the process of photosynthesis, transforming it into every material necessary for life, even oxygen to breathe. But it has been wisely said that a tree is not a forest. The strength of a tree is neither in its rootstock or its woody trunk. It's in the forest. It's the forest that quietly nudges its own environment, making life better for its community bit by bit. Foresters apparently say that a forest creates its own ideal habitat. And thankfully, trees have an open mind when it comes to who they're content to cohabit with, even with us, if we'd let them. We now know that trees partner with fungi in the soil, forming a wood-wide web. The trees of the forest communicate and interchange materials with one another. In this way, mother trees support the saplings developing in their shade. In this way, the stump of a felled tree is maintained alive for decades by nearby trees, perhaps to avoid compromising the network. In this way, trees that are feeling a bit sick or shady can ask the others for a boost, and they receive it. From their healthier neighbours. 
The largest and longest living individuals on the planet are social organisms designed to thrive in community. Trees are vital for human existence on planet Earth, and yet the most simple of things are beyond us when it comes to trees. Which of us could plant a hundred acorns and live to see the mature forest? Perhaps we think it might not be so far-fetched. Modern plantation forests are considered ripe for harvest at only 80 to 120 years old, depending on the species. But your average oak is still a juvenile at this age. The true life of just one tree is beyond us hidden by time. Just as we weren't here yet when the earth was commanded to bring forth green plants of every kind, the average tree of the forest can easily outlive any one of us too. Well, they do now. In the ancient past, before the flood, you and the oak tree could have lived and died as contemporaries. I'm hopeful for the time that has been promised, when all things have been renewed by the one who created them. In that time, we will be contemporaries, we in the trees once again. We're going to... <laughs> We're going to reflect now with a, a Kerry Ellis, Ellison, I think I've pronounced, look around you, um, a piece of music that hopefully will come up next. Let us pray. Let us pray with Christ, God who makes us with the earth, God who gives us to the world, God, God with us in our struggles. 
Hear us, stand with us as we bring our fears and needs and walk, hold hands, advise, encourage. What we have heard in the news, what have we heard in the news this week? Who is in need and who should we give thanks? How far have we got and where have we stumbled? And what seems completely beyond us? Listen for Earth's voice. What is it saying? We remember our neighbours of whatever species. We pray for our enemies and those we fear and pray for peace throughout creation. Hear us, stand with us as we bring our fears and needs and walk, hold hands, advise, encourage. Give thanks for faithfulness, ungirding prayer. Be open about continuing divisions, including local ones. Look to the greater integration of environmental concern in our life and work and seek openness to the joy of deeper fellowship with all of creation. Hear us, stand with us as we bring our fears and needs and walk, hold hands, advise, encourage. In silence, bring to God what no one else need hear not for God to hear, but to remind ourselves what God knows and understands. Pray for those we pray with, acknowledge and respecting what they cannot share with us. Look for support and perseverance and some sustaining sign when we get things right. Pray for impatience, not to simply accept the way things are and pray for peace in our heart and the fuller joys of Christ. Hear us, stand with us, bring our fears and needs and walk, hold hands, advise, encourage. Amen. And we've got a slightly different Lord's Prayer today just to bring our hearts and minds to the the world. Let's say together. Parent of soil and sky, may our praise reveal your beauty. May your encircling love bear fruit. As sun, rain, snow empower creation, provide for life all that sustains. Free us from stubborn arrogance and bring all it brings, that we'll enable change for fellow creatures. Save us in the midst of what our kind has brought about. Deliver life from evil. For the seasons, the cycles and the power of life are yours, now and through all endings. Let it be so. We're going to take an offering now, but we're going to do it slightly differently. Um, Alongside your normal gifts, I've got for you two cards. And we're going to take a moment to think about something we can do, uh, something new we can do that can help our planet and the climate that we are experiencing. So the smaller card is for you to take home with you with whatever you come up with. And the bigger card is to put into the offering plate when it comes round. So look and think about something that you can do. One or two things. And like a lot of these things, if everybody does a little bit, so a lot gets done. And to inspire you, I've got two little videos, again from the Baptist Union, that might give you some inspiration about what some Baptist churches are doing. So... I'm Polly and I'm from High Street Baptist Church in Tring. We're an eco church, which means lots of the things we do, we try to uh, care for creation. And I'm here in the church garden. You can see behind me the uh, bug hotel and our wildlife area that we've left. So we haven't mown all the grass in our small garden. Also a lovely 
buddlier plant there for the butterflies. As I turn around, you'll see that on our church roof, we have solar panels and a water butt. So those are some of the things we're doing because we believe that God created our earth and we need to do everything we can to take care of it. And I'm just showing you our recycling area that we have relocated uh, in this particular time so that it's outside and you can see it here. We recycle uh, food pouches, batteries, stamps uh, and bras. And we've got our area here so that people in the town can make use of it. And we care about creation and recycling is part of our activity for taking care of our environment and our creation care. And we really believe this as a church, that it's an important part of our living out our Christian faith. My name's Ros Durrant and I'm part of the eco team at Cainton Baptist Church. Last summer we agreed as a church to work towards becoming an eco congregation and as part of that we decided to establish a baseline for our carbon footprint for our energy usage and we used the Climate Stewards website calculator for that and we found that we had used 11 tonnes of carbon dioxide in the previous year and we used their offsetting tool and we found that we would need to pay 218 pounds and we're hoping to give that to a local environmental project as part of our annual giving. Obviously since the pandemic started things have had to really slow down but we have been able to do one really useful thing. Our energy contracts came up for renewal and we ran around, did some research. We particularly wanted to find a provider that, would, that uses renewable energy um, and we found good energy for both our electricity and our gas uh, that was cheaper than, than the other um, providers that we'd found. Um, and we also discovered that they offset the gas that they provide, so it meant that we would be carbon neutral as a church for our energy usage. So it's been a great process. Uh, I would encourage you to give it a go. So as the collection, we'll take our collection now, if um, those doing that could do, and put your green cards in when you've filled them in.
Let us pray. Loving God, bless to us the sky that you placed above us, the breath that the trees have given us, the water of all life on the earth, the minerals of which we are composed. Bless to us the commitments we are making, our successes and failures, our setbacks and encouragements. Although we will not ourselves fix or save the world with delight, we accept our place and purpose in your own collaborative care. That all that's offered, indistinguishable from prayer, may be seed planted to bear much fruit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to bring our service towards its close by singing For the Beauty of the Earth. Please stand if you're able. let us pray. Get up, go on your way. Faith makes, makes us fit to heal. The world now needs to know how Christ is flesh for all. As creatures of God's love, tread lightly and with joy. Trust God, learn from the earth. We welcome life where we find home. Let us say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.